feel the loss of Emmanuel Fari very vividly. He um, made a tremendous number of contributions that are very important in many different areas. And in many ways, he reminds me of other um, extremely talented people who have lost us uh, too early. And I can think of uh, people like uh, Arthur Rimbaud, a French poet, or Nicolas de Stal, a uh, very famous painter, or Modigliani, who also disappeared too early, or perhaps closer to our field in economics, Frank Ramsey, an um, extremely talented uh, mathematical economist who um, died very young. And Emmanuel, like them, I think, was able to bring a tremendous amount to all of us uh, through his work, through his exchanges, and the loss is that much more painful to bear. To me, what is truly exceptional is the breadth of the field that Emmanuel covered in economics. Now, to most of us, we would be worried about stretching ourselves too thin, even if we just went across topics in the same field. But Emmanuel could go across closed economy macro, open economy macro, behavioral economics, public finance, asset pricing, corporate finance, networks, and just absolutely seamlessly and effortlessly. And he would contribute, not just was not just one paper, but multiple papers in each of these different fields. He was such a deep a thinker. Emmanuel researched what he thought was best, not necessarily what was popular at the moment. I think Emmanuel's work embodies almost everything that's great about economics. Uh, how economics can bring together very different tools, models at different levels of abstraction as well as data to shed light on important real world issues and guide the policy, guide the policy makers. Emmanuel will be remembered as one of the most influential economists of our generation. There are sort of, I think, two big ideas that stand out to me. The first is that finance and economics really need to be studied together if we want to understand some of the big challenges and some of the big uh, uh, issues that are going on in the world economy. So a lot of his work has been importing insights from asset pricing and sometimes also corporate finance into sort of international macro macroeconomics. Um, the second big idea, or maybe it's more of an attitude, <laughs> is that sometimes tackling important policy questions requires building foundations, theoretical foundations. That's a big word, but maybe just ways of thinking about things that people may not be familiar with. And he really kind of made that one of his missions, like give people the tools, give people ways of thinking about different problems. When I think of Emmanuel Fari, the first word that comes to my mind is elegance. The elegance of his ideas, the inimitable way he could boil down a complex topic or model to a single elegant equation, and perhaps sometimes overlooked due to the sheer quality of his work, the way he could elegantly and clearly communicate his ideas. In many ways, he was the closest thing I have ever encountered to the ideal of a scholar, someone fully committed to the power of economics and the importance of research and ideas, yet deeply concerned about their real world application. Someone who would follow the truth no matter where it took him. And someone who was concerned not only with being the best, but also making sure his students and colleagues were the best that they could be. I greatly miss Emmanuel, my friend and colleague at Harvard. Since our offices were just across the hall, we spent a lot of time together on issues, both economic and personal. Many people have discussed his brilliant mind and publications, including the recent work on production networks that's likely to be his most important scholarly contribution. I'd like to talk about Emmanuel's work with uh, David Bakay on input-output networks. This is really path-breaking stuff. I think I can say that uh, their work starts where Vasily Leontiev and Paul Samuelson have stopped. 
they show us how to do better measurement, better theory, better estimation, laying the foundation for better macroeconomics. Emmanuel was a one in a lifetime, maybe one in many lifetimes collaborator and friend. From the outside, people mostly knew him for his extraordinary intelligence. But for people who were closer to him, I think it was really his persistence and his enthusiasm for his work that were even more unique. When I was working with him, I never had to worry that a project would hit a dead end because I knew that we would eventually grind through or break down whatever roadblocks came our way. His enthusiasm for his work was infectious. One time when we were traveling together in New Zealand, Emmanuel discovered some of Al Harberger's papers from the 1970s. And we stayed up all night in a place called Punakaiki trying to read and understand them. We'd rented a cottage by the ocean, but by the time we were done with the papers, the sun had already set and it was too late to go to the beach. Not only that, all the stores and restaurants in the area were closed and so we couldn't get dinner. I tried to call up some pubs to convince them to cook something for us, but nobody was willing to do it. Eventually, we ate our dinner, which was a bag of bananas Emmanuel had picked up from the grocery store earlier that day, and some energy drinks from the back of the car. Despite this, we went to bed fully satisfied, knowing that we had learned something new that neither of us knew before. I'm going to miss moments like this in my life. Adieu, my friend. I think about your absence every day. As Emmanuel's students, we would like to share how important he has been for us as a mentor and as a role model. So we were all intimidated at first. He struck us as a genius, one of those academics who wrote papers that nobody else could, who engaged with deep economic questions that we thought were impossible to answer. Later on, despite choosing to focus on trade instead of macro, Emmanuel remained always there for me. And literally so, his lit hour office door was always open and he meant to encourage us to drop by anytime. It became apparent that he was such a well-rounded person to chat anything with. He could talk about the recent novel he was reading, complain about the approaching deadlines, and even teach me English writing from his French expertise. For me, Emmanuel fueled a tremendous uh, period of personal growth. Uh, a single one hour conversation with him would often fuel months or even years of inspiration. Oh yeah, for me, he was a brave dreamer. He had always this sort of uh, foot on the, uh, on the air. And, uh, he always had another foot firmly on the ground. And I mean, right at the same time, he would always encourage um, us to like go forth and just ask the big questions, explore uncharted waters, and just face the frustration of not always finding the way forward, but always comfort us that we, we had learned something new and well, we were just one step closer to the right answer. Yeah, I will always remember this, you know, infinite passion for learning and these insatiable curiosity. Emmanuel also really loved his students. He enjoyed presenting his work to junior scholars. He really believed, you know, in young minds and people who want to do things differently and want to do things better. I was always struck by his personal qualities as well as his professional talent. Um, he was able to understand when I was discouraged or afraid or just tired of a project. Um, and even when I didn't voice it, he would just truly participate in whatever I was going through, uh, both personally and professionally. We all saw him as this role model beyond just the boundaries of academic work and admired how his kindness, his humility, his respectfulness, um, importantly, his hu whole humanity was always present wherever he went and whoever he spoke to. So I feel that he may have left us and um, we miss him tremendously, but we still carry his memory forward as a tremendously caring advisor, a guiding light and our undisputed role model. It was clear that he didn't just care about the developments of my kind of professional life, but he actually genuinely cared 
they would find a path of happiness and, and, and stability in my life. And it, it was clear that he, that he truly cared. One of the nicest memories I have of Emmanuel was how every time that we would meet and we would discuss about research and, um, and new ideas and projects, and I would describe to him some new ideas I was getting excited about. You could see him light up. You could see that he was getting happy for me. He was sharing his enthusiasm for new projects and, and, the, and the research process. He always pushed me and his other students to do their best and to reach for the stars and really challenge this. He had a genuine passion for economics and for really pushing the boundaries. He was trying to solve the hardest questions, the non obvious questions, discovering something truly new and unexpected something he didn't anticipate before solving the model gave him an enormous sense of satisfaction. It is hard to conceive how life is going to keep going without him. For many years now, every time I start a new project, my first thoughts always are, what will Emmanuel think? Will he think this project is interesting? Will he find this idea trivial or uninteresting? The greatest fear was always that he will know an obscure 1950s paper I never heard of or anybody else ever heard of who already solved the same problem I was trying to tackle. And, and the best part of preemptively asking these questions was to meet with him later on and actually get his thoughts. And no matter how much I thought I could guess his comments, um, he will always come up with something new, a new angle, a new way to improve the project, to connect it with something else. And these moments were really exciting. They were always very exciting. I don't think this will change over time, though. I'll keep asking those same questions. And in that sense, uh, Emmanuel's presence, his intellectual influence, will stay with me and with the many other people he interacted with for a very long time. Emmanuel was the kind of mentor that any junior faculty uh, could wish for. He was always there for you when you needed advice. Like literally always there. I will miss Emmanuel forever. Returning to the office will never be the same. He leaves us an amazing body of work, which I'm sure will endure the test of time. But sadly, we will never get to see him shape the next generation of macroeconomists. And this is also an unbelievable loss. Most importantly for me, Emmanuel was the person to go to, not only for work, but also to have fun and learn. I haven't met in my life anyone as brilliant as him, and at the same time being extremely kind and gentle, funny and witty. He was a polymath. He would navigate very easily on various topics that he had studied and read for pleasure. This was really great about him. I was doing African history for a living. He would know as much as I did, reading it for fun. We would talk endlessly about poetry, about literature. And I was stunned about his deep reading of many books, for example, of Nikos Kazadzakis or Konstantin Kavafi. Every week or so, he would recommend one or two books to read, a couple of movies to go and watch, and when Netflix became big, you know, which series? He was a true intellectual with whom I liked to interact. We talked about many topics. Often we discussed arcane publications about economics, which were relevant to either his work or mine work. And we discussed also Israeli movies and more general theater and film. His brain turned fast, really, really fast. But he also worked hard, really hard. Everything had to be perfect. He was always working, actually, even when we were playing tennis. A long time ago, more than 10 years ago, he told me about an idea while we were resting on the side of the tennis court. I joked that uh, he would have a paper written before our next tennis game, tennis game. and uh, of course he did, right? He always liked to ask the hard questions and be asked the hard questions, not only in economics, but in general about life. Um, he, he was always also uh, 
a rare combination of a person who was extremely ambitious in the sense that he was setting the bar for him very high, always. But at the same time, he was always extremely humble. In a, and this is because he was really a genuine, curious person. And as any curious person, he was always uh, ready to listen to somebody with a different point of view or a new idea, a different idea. It was a pleasure talking to him. Emmanuel was also very kind and generous. And he cared deeply about people and about fairness. He was generous in his, with his time, he was generous with his caring, he was uh, generous with his knowledge and he was generous with his money, with any means that he had. That's Emmanuel to me. Recently when we last met, he told me that a friend of his had to go through an expensive medical procedure. That friend couldn't afford the procedure, so Emmanuel just paid it in full. And I was not surprised, that's exactly the type of person Emmanuel was. When I happened to be at Harvard for a seminar during the Boston Marathon bombing day, and Emmanuel found out that I'm there, he didn't let me stay by myself on that dreadful day. He walked all the way with me from Cambridge to Boston to make sure that I, I get home safely. The experience happened a few years ago when I gave a paper that was still in preliminary form at a conference. I reported that there were some things that my co-author and I still didn't understand. Emmanuel was in the audience and I ran into him several hours later. He told me that he'd emailed me a short note about the things that confused me. And when I saw the note, I couldn't believe my eyes. It took me and my co-author several days to understand what he was saying. But in the end, he totally resolved our confusion. While his inner circle of f close friends and co-authors probably had this type of experience many times, it says a lot about him that he could be so generous with someone like me who was not part of his inner, inner circle. There was no trace of arrogance or triumph in, it, in him, just plain humility and joy of sharing ideas. In that experience that I had with Emmanuel, I didn't just learn a lot about economics. I also got a great lesson about what it means to be a really fine human being. I will always remember him as a bright, energetic, brilliant person, um, so full of life, goofy in so many different ways. And I will just, I just so, so dearly miss him. It's been a few months now since Emmanuel passed away, uh, but I think I still have not digested his loss. Maybe when this brutal pandemic subsides uh, and I have a chance to go back to the tower, the fact that he's no longer with us will finally sink in. In the meantime, he lives vividly in my dreams. I dream about walking toward my office, noticing his door open, walking a few extra steps to have a brief, maybe a long conversation with him about how crazy life has been in the last few months. And I also dream about discussing research with him, telling him what I've been, what I've been up to, uh, listening to what he's been up to. But sadly, that's just a dream. And it's one of those dreams that will never come true. I want to remember Emmanuel a bit like the French poet Arthur Rimbaud, an incredible light but far too short. One image I have of Emmanuel that I think I'll always remember distinctly is the smile on his face as he stepped into the gold room where the Bretton Woods Agreement was signed for the first time. At the time, Emmanuel was working on a paper on the international financial system. And you could tell as he gazed around the room that Emmanuel was at home in the right place. And if there is a heaven, I expect one would find Emmanuel in that gold room deep in conversation with Keynes about economics and immensely happy. We'll miss Emmanuel. He was a tremendous gift. Ah, uh, and I can't imagine economics without him. I'm thinking of you every day. I really hope there that you have found your dudes. And every now and then, 
you also chat with Alberto. Once he said, if we're not all in this profession to solve the mysteries of the universe, then why are we doing this at all? At the time I laughed because only Manio could say something like this and really mean it. This is the kind of exceptional individual that Emmanuel was, one of a kind. This is the person that the profession has lost way too soon. Emmanuel, while I believe only you had the potential to solve truly the mysteries of the universe, we will all do our best to carry your legacy in our teaching, in our advising, and in our research. The mark that you have left on my and many others' lives, both personal and professional, is tremendous. I'll forever miss you. May you rest in peace. Thank you.